Thank you. Um, so I'm going to be talking about you know how Comcast improves customer experience with AI and ML. Um, you know, Comcast has a stellar reputation in customer experience. Uh, uh, they've been ranked among the worst uh, for many, many years, although they, they really started taking it seriously about seven years ago and, and putting in a lot of money in improving their customer experience. AIML was one of the streams. Um, it has come off the bottom and, and they've made a lot of strides, uh, fortunately. Um, so, you know, so let, just a second about me, you know, I run I run two teams for Comcast. One is their video products, the whole uh, uh, stack uh, that powers the video products, and uh, and also an applied AI center of excellence. And and the work that I'm going to talk about today is is from that applied AI center of excellence. Um, so I'll give you just a flavor of what this applied AI group does before I double click into the customer experience side of it. So the applied AI group, it's a small group, but but with a large impact uh, within within the company. And we work in, in five different verticals or areas. Uh, the, the first one is voice and, and natural language processing for, for uh, all is probably an exaggeration, but for many, many interactions. The voice remote being the primary one, uh, you know, we, uh, some of you might be using it. Uh, we, uh, there, we process around 14 billion voice commands with a B uh, a year. And, and that has been going up every year. Uh, we also use the same uh, platform, the NLP platform that we built for the voice remote for a customer experience, and I'll get to that uh, in the later part of the talk. Uh, the second vertical is, is content discovery, uh, which is the search, recommendations, and personalization algorithms, and, and we're doing about 2 billion queries a day there. Um, media analytics is the third vertical <clears throat> where we analyze the, the video that's flowing through through the pipes, um, and we... we uh, power creative uh, uh, video experiences there. So one of them is, is uh, sports highlights. Uh, if you record in the US, if you record an NFL game uh, on a DVR, we will automatically identify the key plays of the game for you. Uh, it's more common in the UK. Over here, we are very restricted due to, due to video rights. But in the UK, uh, Comcast owns Sky. And, and Sky has this going for cricket, soccer, uh, golf, NASCAR, and, and obviously um, NFL as well. Uh, so they, they do, like if you tune into a game in, in the UK on, on Sky um, and you miss the first part of the game, you can catch up with the highlights there. Uh, the, the second one in the media analytics one is something called Smart Resume. If you ever DVR a program, although less and less people are doing it now, but if you are forwarding through the ads, uh, one of the biggest pain points is that you overshoot the end of the, the ad pod. And what we do with Smart Resume is that if you start forwarding through the ad pod, we'll auto-resume playback at the end of it. Uh, we can't do skip because of legal reasons, but, but we can help you fast forward and, and get the end of the ad pod correct. Uh, the, the fourth vertical is um, AI for our Xfinity Home products. Uh, you know, we, Comcast offers Xfinity Home uh, security solutions. Uh, so we power a lot of the algorithms on the camera uh, in terms of detecting motion. Uh, uh, we also look at the clips that are uploaded to the cloud, and we allow you know uh, the allow the users to filter the clips by by people, by pets, by vehicles, um, and um, and we're working on more proactive notification type activities based on uh, sensor data, like you know. Is is a door or window open at a time when it's not, even if the alarm is off, and 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 proactively notifying uh, customers, uh, saying that hey, you might want to check it out. And then the last one, which is the focus of this talk, is using AI and ML for customer experience. So let me go uh, double click in this one. Um, so we. Uh, the AI and ML use cases uh, at Comcast for customer experience fall in three categories, and I'll give you an example for each one uh, in this talk. Right? The first one is predictive, the second one is interactive, and then the third one is proactive. Um, so let me go into the predictive one um, first. And um, you know, so we have something called an Xfinity Assistant, uh, which is an automated uh, tool which where you can, it's an app on the phone, or you can uh, get to it through, through the website or on the TV itself by, by using the voice remote and asking uh, customer 
uh, experience related questions. Um, and and we, it, it's, it's supposed to be self-service as much as possible. Uh, this launched about five-ish years ago. And we've, uh, because of the assistant, we have taken out uh, several hundreds of thousands of calls a year from our call centers uh, because we are getting people to, uh, to, to self-help as much as possible. Um, so this is yeah, uh, the, this is the various channels you can get to it. You know the TV, you know through through a web page or or uh, an app. Um, so it, it, large parts of this uh, this assistant are driven by AI and ML, right? So this is a, a screenshot of what's there on the, uh, what you'd see on the, on a phone. Uh, on the top, you see a, a card that says troubleshoot uh, internet, right? Troubleshoot internet issues. Uh, this is something that's pre uh, done proactive, predictively. Like, you know, when, whenever you open the app, we actually take a snapshot of the health of your systems, and we determine if you're running into issues, and we'll pop something up if, if, they, if you notice some anomalies there in, in the health of your systems. It's not just internet, it's also the video side uh, as well. Uh, then the middle one is, is actions that the user can take, um, and, and the, that is, you know, if you have an overview, Bill will pop it up saying, hey, you know, your, your bill is over to you, make a payment. So that's also uh, done algorithmically through, through AI and ML. And at the bottom is, is just a text box where, if, if, uh, where a user can come in and type in whatever issues they're having if it's not covered uh, above, right? And then we, we, once, we, uh, once you have that, then we'll, based on, on the information or based on what the user has clicked, we'll then recommend an action. Um, the action over here on this, this example is assuming the user has clicked the troubleshoot uh, uh, internet issue. Uh, no, actually, it's or, or the bottom one, my internet is slow. We'll get to this one on the right. Um, so the, the way it works is that we use, uh, sorry, there's an echo coming. We use reinforcement learning here in a significant way. Um, you know, we, we take the context, what the customer may have typed the, uh, using the NLP platform. We take the telemetry from the health of your systems as that I was mentioning that's on the bottom left. And, and we do some predictive AI and ML on it. And then we, we send it to an AI engine which, did, which determines what the right action should be, right? And the action could be taking you to a self-help page. Um, it could be an action dialogue that shows up on the, on the screen, like you know, what are some next steps or, or further clarifying questions. Uh, it could be escalating that to an, uh, a human agent or it could be, you know, if, if the problem is severe enough, just saying, hey, don't, we, we understand you have an issue. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna roll a truck and, and schedule a technician and taking, taking you to a screen that will help you uh, schedule a technician to come out to your house. Um, so as I said, you know, we, we use reinforcement learning and, and we optimize on the rewards, which are shown on the top left corner here. Uh, some of the examples are, you know, session success rate, Engagement, internet satisfaction, intent satisfaction. Sorry, um, NPS scores shown, and we also one of the other ones is is callbacks. Right? Does did the customer call back within 24 hours of, of having an issue uh, into a call center? Um, as part of the, this whole assistant, you know, as I was saying, we also rank some of the, um, the the middle part of the the app. Right? Some of the actions that one can take. And uh, over here, you know, we, we, we look at high click-through rate action buttons to, to pop up first. Uh, also top picked NLP intents, right, based on the intents, uh, uh, look, looking at past history. And, and then we rank a candidate action set. Um, and the final one here is that we do need to incorporate chat context uh, in this whole interactive chat here, um, mainly because you don't want a loop, right? If, if a customer says, you know, how, how much longer do I need to pay you $113 a month? You know, we, we come back and say, okay, you know, here's your billing information, here's your bill amount, your bill went up or down, for, for and, and we give you the reasons why it went up. And then, you know, the user might say, you know, repeat the question, and you don't want to go into a loop and present the same options again. You have to look at, look at the context and make the right decisions, right? You have to have the, the, the context in, in, in what comes next. So that's the predictive side. There's a little bit of interaction here as well, uh, but but the focus on the example that I'm going to show on the in the interactive piece is is an AI assistant for our customer service agents. Um, just trying to keep track of time uh, for our for our customer service uh, agents, right? So uh, you know we we get 
you know, hundreds of thousands of calls a day in, in, in the uh, Comcast call centers. Um, and, and, you know, the agent performance can be spotty, right? It depends on the quality of the agent, et cetera. Um, and we want to increase the, and, and also it takes, it takes time, you know, if they have to go and research the issues. And we want to see how we can help the agents do their job better and in a more, um, and, and with better quality, right? More, more efficiently and, and with better quality. And, and so what we do is, you know, given, and this is rolled out currently only for, for uh, chats. It's not rolled out in IVR. Uh, but what we do is in, in, in the chat set session based on, on the context, right? Uh, what we do on the right side is, is give uh, suggestions, pop-up suggestions for the agent to use, a pop-up response based on the chat. Um, uh, we, if we are sure, we might also pop an, uh, a card like you know, if the billing, if it's something about billing, we might pop up a nice, nicely formatted billing card that the agent can just drag and drop into the chat. Um, uh, that that's pre-populated, etc. And so the agent having to go and look up the account and then look up the bill amount and just type in a number. So uh, we we have this. It's it's currently deployed to 10% of our chat agents, and and uh, and what we're doing is we're gathering a lot of data from here, right? We we track what the agent has done, whether the agent has used uh, the card, if there's a card present, if the agent has used one of our recom recommend, recom recommended responses uh, to the customer. And, um, and we are really learning a lot from, uh, from these interactions. Um, and, and our goal is to, you know, this is assist, what we call assisted session. Uh, the assistant that I'd spoken about earlier was unassisted. And we want to take as many of these assisted sessions and make them unassisted. So um, that brings me to the last one on the on the proactive uh, side of things, right? Um, and and the example over here is that you know on the internet side, well, um, it, it's a very comp when when pe when customers say internet is slow, it's it's really really hard to to really figure out where the issues are. That's because it could be one of three different places, right? There's the network that comes to your house. It could be in the network side. It could be in the gateway itself, the modem, or it could be between the modem and, and your devices, right? So those are the three big areas where the problem can happen. And, um, um, and, and a different, you require different skill sets for some of the issues. So, um, you know, when we send a technician out to the house, we do something called a standard technician, a standard truck row uh, that's on the bottom right. Uh, but they can only take care of issues uh, within the house, within the gateway, or between the gateway and your devices. Uh, they can't deal with the line issues. Um, and the line is from the plant to the node, which is, and then nodes don't just cover one house, they, they, they cover a cluster of houses. Um, and, and that requires a different, you know, if you just roll a standard technician out, it's just a wasted, uh, it's wasted time, effort, and money for the company is also wasted time and, and for the customer uh, because they all they have to do is come back and, and send out another truck. Um, so what we're doing over here is uh, looking at data from the nodes, <clears throat> um, uh, from, th from three sources, the nodes, um, telemetry data, uh, from the gateways, the, that's the modems, and then from the devices. And we, we're doing that to predict whether the issue is inside the house or it's outside the house, um, and um, and and we do this, and this you know the the, the features have to be run you know very frequently. Uh, although the models, the final prediction is run when when a customer calls an agent, and and the agent then if the agent realizes that a truck has to go out, they make a call to the to our models and say, okay, is, should this truck be a, a line technician or should it be a standard one? And then if we recommend a line technician they actually will roll a line tech out. Um, and, and the model has been doing really, really well. We're rolling it out in different parts of the country. And the performance has been at about 90% accuracy on the line tech. Um, so uh, with that, you know, I'm going to wrap up here. Um, and oh, we have a few minutes for questions. Um, so open it up for questions. <clears throat> Um, it, we again, the, the, the feature is, is taking as many calls out of the IV, IVR as one, right? We're doing this in, in textual 
context, can we roll it out to the IVR, which will broaden the number of use cases, the number of customers we can go after, uh, because that's IVR as a primary uh, uh, point where people contact us. Um, the other one is, how do we take more assisted cases and, and take them and make them unassisted as much as possible, right? As much of self-help as, as we can get, uh, because that it, it does improve customer satisfaction. People don't like talking to agents. Uh, so, so it does help with NPS scores, uh, the more self-help we can provide them. And, but, but it has to work, right? It has to be, um, uh, it really has to help solve the problem.